Hey everyone, welcome to the Gallimorphic Science Podcast, a podcast about science, art, and culture. My name is Tommy, and joining me are my co-hosts, Scott, Raven, and Zach. And today we are talking about Codex Seraphinianus, a wonderfully bizarre and lavishly illustrated art book slash, I guess, encyclopedia in air quote, uh, by Italian artist Luigi Serafini. And this book actually recently had its 40th anniversary. So really? Scott given yeah. that you suggested that we talk about this book for this podcast, why don't you give us a bit of a brief rundown or give all the listeners a brief rundown on this book and uh, how you first came across it and like what were your impression about this wonderfully bizarre book? Right, right. Yeah, I'm excited to do this book because um, I've been obsessed with it ever since I ran across images of it on the internet in the late 90s. So it's an easy read by Italian surrealist Luigi Serafini, as you said. Uh, written in a nonsense language devoid of any real meaning, but intended to convey a sense of confusion in the reader. As That's though correct. the reader That's was, what happens. <laughs> yeah, as though you were preliterate, but intuiting some sort of inaccessible meaning in the text. So uh, there's charts, there's graphs, there's Tree labels, diagrams. there's all sorts of charts, graphs, and structures that sort of emulate meaning or convey the illusion of meaning in this case. Yeah, that's what I'd say, yeah, illusion of meaning. And there is a lot of text. Yes, there is. <laughs> yeah, um, because that's how the book feels like. It feels like, and I remember reading that interview with Inside a Magazine that the artist did, um, the only bit of research, to be honest, that I did about this book and everything. Uh, and he's, he described it as kind of almost a stream of consciousness and it's supposed yeah. to simulate the feeling of when you are a child or maybe even someone who uh, speaks like a different language to a book, like the language that the, a book is written in and trying to, you know, it seems like there is some meaning there, but you don't necessarily understand it because right. the way that the book is structured, it seems like, like I said, it seems like it's an encyclopedia. You have different section like animals and plants and culture and, you know, civilization and engineering but it's all complete nonsense yeah and there's um more than just that there's textures and surfaces and and you know one one page looks like particle effects and stuff like that it's, yes and if you get yourself uh your hands on a copy a physical copy of the book the paper itself has a strange off-putting texture it's yeah. not like anything yeah. that you could get from any other book that's out there. It's yeah, got a it weird feels, thing. Or... Yeah, it feels like some old like parchment type paper. Like yes. some really old school. Ooh. So it looks like it does look like it came out of like another time, another dimension. Like this is a book that, you know, it's an almanac of this other culture. Uh, this other world that I guess just came out of the mind of this particular artist. And as far as I know, all versions of the book have had the same kind of weird papery texture going on. With the I don't know if that's the case. I don't oh. know because it's been okay. through different publishers. Okay, yeah, so, there's been oh. three different publishers as far as I know. At the oh, very really? least, yes. So uh, yeah. it was published, get, getting to that point, actually. But first, uh, on the language side of things, there's a lot of the language. I mean, there's like pages and pages and pages of text. Uh, written in a sort of not like language and in fact there is nothing written down in italian or any other real language in this book yeah yeah there are page numbers however and these appear to have a distinct real meaning written in a form of base 21 which explains why i've never been able to suss out the page numbers since you expect them to be written a much more familiar base 10 yeah but Serafini worked on the book for two years during the 1970s. And the book was originally published in 1981 in two volumes by Franco Maria Ricci. Since then, it has seen several reprints, including our printing of the 2013 edition published by Rizzoli. And Rizzoli has then gone on and to publish a 40th anniversary version for last year in 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that, wow. that, that book is quite chunky. Like I looked it up on Book Depository and it weighs like six pounds <laughs> like it's a it's a hefty book it, it weighs like pretty much i think uh almost twice as heavy as like the, the the one that scott and i have which is the 2013th edition that one weighs about three and a half pounds holy crap so um no actually uh let me just check 
three and a half pounds. Uh, really? two and a half. I've got a copy in front of me, and it's, I can't really tell. It's around right about three pounds. Yeah. Um, because the only the only other book I have for reference in terms of like size and sheer kind of thickness and weight is the Girls Frontline Art Book Volume Two, and that one has four hundred four pages and weighs three and a half pounds. Oh, so yeah, chunky, chunky art book. It's a tome. Yeah, it is a tome. And speaking of pages, it is getting bigger. Oh yeah. Yeah. So there have been additional pages added since. Um, the original was published. Oh. So the additional pages added by the artists. Originally, the codex was 392 pages, but the 2021 edition is 416. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. So in that sense, it's sort of a living document, you know, it keeps That's on growing. Cool. Yeah, the artist seems to be saying like, he's like, uh, I just kept drawing after the book was published. So here are all the other weird stuff that <laughs> came out of my brain in the meantime. And here it is in the 40th. And he, in the interview that I've read, he did float the idea like, hey, who knows? Maybe we could have like a 50th edition. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he so, is in his 70s now, though. So 72, according to his insider. Well, I mean, people like like artists like that, they just don't stop. I mean, look at, you know, Hayao Miyazaki. He keeps on re- announcing that he's, he's retired. And then he keeps on coming back every time someone else makes an anime film because it's like, oh, I'll show these young women. <laughs> <laughs> that is very exactly. true. Yes. So one thing I do like about uh, the Insider interview, which we'll post in the show notes and everything, uh, it seems like he's kind of taken a turn for, towards the contemporary in that I see a very familiar uh, picture that he's drawn here where it looks like he took something from like a vaporwave music video and it was released a few years ago, a certain one. Oh, and maybe. I'm not certain that's not in, in an older version as well, but it's hard to tell. I can't refer yeah. page numbers. It's right. Like, uh... No, I, I, I remember that book. The one that we have, oh yes, and I don't recall this page being in the book, so I do believe it's. A oh, book. okay, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, it's very possible. But I guess um, Serafini's art is just in such a style of its own. It's really difficult to pass down, like the exact reference, apart from the one that he mentioned in the interview, which was like the Carlo Crivelli, the Italian Renaissance painter. Yeah. That's the only person that he really, that's one of the few people he cited as like an influence. And even then his art style and subject matter were like really different because, you know, Carlo Crivelli, he just pretty much almost exclusively painted like Judeo-Christian religious imagery. So Right, yeah. Uh, one of the other influences you could argue was a copy of the Magic Flute. Hmm. Serafini listened to over and over and over and over again, wearing oh, really? out a record, in fact. Yeah. So if the book has a soundtrack of any kind, that's probably it. Huh. Hmm. So, yeah. It makes more sense that way if you listen to the Magic Flute while reading this book. He did this. Yeah. He what did this. What if language. you listen to it in reverse? What happens then? <laughs> well, then you're just starting on the last page. <laughs> 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 everything looks normal if you ask them to <laughs> it's like oh it now kind of makes sense and looks kind of like an ordinary encyclopedia now I we know your secret now mr seraphini <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i the thing that i really like about it and i remember tweeting about this a while ago is how it just presents all of these extremely bizarre imagery in the most matter of fact kind of way like in yeah, that's true you know especially that infamous imagery that get passed around so much on the internet of two people you know having sex on a bed in a missionary position and then next thing you know they turn into a crocodile it's just like well that's just yeah. what happens when you have sex on a bed in a missionary <laughs> position you turn into a crocodile that's just the thing yep. you know well that's the risk you take you know yeah <laughs> I don't know it sounds pretty cool. Like the in the person <laughs> of Brazil said that, like, oh, you know, if you if you take the vaccine and you turn into crocodile, don't blame me. It's like this was this predated that. So I don't know if he's like accidentally came across some random page of uh, the Codex Serafiniatus in one of his delusional drug trips or whatever. I had too much ayahuasca. <laughs> So my, my, my biggest question with the book, and I haven't 
read this interview that you guys did, but has, it, it, has did he invent a whole alphabet? And is this written out yeah. in a way you could, in theory, decode? No. W would he you get invent, real words? He nope. did invent this entire lexicon, but it's nonsense. It's oh, it has gosh. absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Interesting. Even yeah. though there have been attempts to decode the Codex Serafinianus, they've basically run into the problem of garbage. The one of the other books it's actually been compared to is the Voynich Manuscript. And the Voynich Manuscript was a book that was uh, uncovered by Wilfred Voy Voyage in the early 20th century, written on medieval parchment in an unknown hand, unknown oh. to Europe. Oh. Yeah, we may talk about that at some point in the in the future, but uh, it's an alchemical text. It's an alchemical text really? of some sort, but there's some there's some legitimate questions as to whether or not it was written as a way to raise money. Oh, interesting. And as a consequence, it may be filled with a nonsense language. And actually, this book, the Codex Serafinianus, has been compared to that book uh, for for the same reason. Huh. Was that book written during an era when like alchemy was an actual real thing? Like yes. people were like in the proto chemistry day when people were trying yes. to turn it in. Okay, so maybe yeah. that he wrote it in that language is like some kind of maybe he's trying to protect his like intellectual property or something like that. Like his his oh, that'd trade be interesting. secrets. That could be. Yeah, they've been trying to decipher this uh, the Voynich manuscript for decades now uh, yeah decades <laughs> so cryptographics uh things you know uh, kicking up the way they have been they've been you know running it through again and again and again they come out with nonsense with the voyage <laughs> manuscript and with this so it's like the the only exception is the page numbers which is a form of base 21 yeah. so yeah there's a page on the internet we'll link to that uh discusses this so only huh. the numbers and maybe mm -hmm. only just the page numbers that's so weird. I love it. Yes, it is. Yes, it yeah. is. It's one of my inspirations for uh, an art project, a long-standing art project I've had been doing for Conlang, which is a constructed language. Con I Lang. remember that. Yeah. So. The Makwa. Uh, uh, Makwa, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised that I haven't come across this book until in the 2010s. So the reason why I even heard of this book was uh, back in ran about the early 2010s is ran about when I started uploading my artwork online. And uh, that was back when I drew the series called the Eschaton Beastry about like, uh, basically it's the biblically accurate angel meme before the biblically accurate angel meme. The whole idea was that these beings are actual God's children as opposed to like human beings that have convinced themselves were made in image of God. Here are the beings that were actually made in the image of God. And they're all really oh, okay. surreal looking things. So I made that and a bunch of spin-off related stuff. And people started commenting on my artwork about like, oh, have you seen this thing called Codex Seraphinianus? It reminds me of Codex Seraphinianus. And I had no idea what it was. And so when I decided to look it up, obviously the book was already really, really out of print. And so I couldn't really get my hands on it until the 2013 edition came out and now I have it and I love it because it's like, yeah, this is totally vibing with me, so to speak. Yeah, I know. Right. I mean, it has this whole world contained within its pages that is at once sort of believable and yet so sort of surreal at the same time. I was going to say, it's like looking at a gazetteer from a different dimension. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, Yep. So, so like, hey, you want to come to um, uh, insert gibberish name here? Here's your your one one book cover to cover uh, look at this country and, yeah. and its civilization and its, its people and the science. It's like the Lonely Planet Guide to whatever this bizarre world is. Welcome to bizarre world. Here are our and here are our patrons. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so um, a yes. modern thing it reminds me of is there is this Twitter account that uh, tweets about random lost civilizations, and if I, I think the mm. Twitter account is called Lost Civilizations, where they they tweet about random things about. But it's 
Yeah, very much like what you would expect. Yeah, okay, that would fit very well within the codex here for the honest. And I'll make sure to put a link to that in the show notes. The other thing I really appreciate about this book is just the fact that it never explains anything because um, a, like a piece of art like this forces its reader or its audience to engage with it. You can't passively consume True. this artwork because you will look at it and you ha- you would go, what the heck is going on? What And you, you would, you know, the, the gears would start cranking your brain to try like, hey, it would make sense of it, even if it makes no sense at all. So it's not the kind of art that people could passively consume. It forces you to like, look at this and engage with it and think about it because otherwise, you know, I, I, there would be certain people I can imagine that there would be certain people who would not appreciate it simply because there's there's no law, there's no like, you know, Codex Serafinianus explained type video because you yeah. can't, you know, um, and I, I absolutely detest those type of things because right. they're basically writing fan fiction, but that's another rant for another time. There's like a, a, a Rube Goldbergian sort of style to a lot of the uh, the imagery in, in the Codex Serafinianus. It's like there's one page that's got like it's got like a printing press on it, and a motile pen and gears and, oh, and yeah. teeth and wheels and stuff like that, and it's and it's writing out the alphabet in yeah. the, the the Codex Serafinianus alphabet. So, but there's a, a lot of that going on as well, a sort of mechanical, sort of elaborate structures that uh, that do things. Oh and yeah. It's, and it's like go bang, get going, getting back to to Tommy's point. It's it's like you can't read the text. You may as well read the illustrations mm-hmm. and try mm-hmm. to interpret them some way. I was trying to interpret this book until I don't know what page this is. I th- I was thinking of it as like a field guide. Oh, it's page thirty-seven. And then all of a sudden, these trees were walking around and swimming. Oh yeah, in a lake, and I thought, oh, oh, that's what this book is. Okay, oh, I, yes, I don't yes. have to try and figure it out. <laughs> Are those those like avocado-looking trees? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They split it's in some, half, and they split yeah, in half, yeah. and they're avocados. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like that. Actually, reminds me of, um, and also Scott, when you mentioned like the pens, where they have those series of diagrams, like like I said about the two people turning into a crocodile thing, but it's a series of di- diagram that's supposed to depict a sequence of event, except that it's all completely nonsense, like the origin of pens, like, and it's got people growing pens, like pens coming out of the ground, and then you're supposed oh, yeah. to like, what, that's harvest like the them and page, wear them yeah. around your neck. Like, it's <laughs> just so, it's just such utter nonsense. Like the book is... And it's quite an achievement too. It's just consistently nonsensical. There is not a single page on there that you look at and you go, oh yeah, that makes sense because none of it makes sense. I think the most normal picture in this book is probably the picture of that, the shrew, which is wearing like jewelry or something, that kind of shrew or rodent looking little mammal that was wearing jewelry. That's about as normal as it gets. (laughs) Everything else is just total bonkers. Oh, no, no, no. You know, walking umbrellas at an intersection is totally (laughs) fucking normal. That's just me. Yeah. Those are those, like, what what I like to call leggy boys, right? Leggy boys. It's just, just like, a pair of legs from the waist down. And they're, like, it's just a whole, they have a whole section devoted to it, you know? And it's just these beings or entities or whatever they are. I was first made aware of its existence in the late 90s, like I said earlier, by a comics artist I met at a cafe. Uh, the cafe no longer exists, but uh, uh, it's stuck in my brain. And I went out and, and searched for it on the internet and found pictures, found samples of the writing and all that sort of stuff. And that's really when I was working on my Conlang project and I really got inspired by the ligature nature of the words, if I can call them that, you know, in, in the text. And we finally got our copy in November of 2013. I know this because I actually made a Tumblr post about it way back then. Huh. And uh, looks, I wonder if if the newer version is the same way. If it's so much heavier, it, it, it's probably got a heavier weight of paper because this is fairly lightweight. Mm-hmm. for its size mm. but anyway the texture of the paper is sort of ribbed yeah, corrugated so, even. corrugated actually i would say Ooh. yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. I would say that ripped, as well. Ripped for your surreal pleasure. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. Okay. Um, what else could I say? I mean, it's it's a really visual book. I mean, you, you, there's a picture of a plant that's growing into a pair of scissors. Well, I mean, yep. given that it's a it's such a visual book, like what are your, some of your favorite? I guess I guess there would be too many to list, but like what are the one of the things that come to your mind when you when I say Codex Serafinianus? What is the thing that you know immediately jump out at you? Oh, for me, it's the fish, the fish with the uh, uh, eyes of the tails. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely one of the things that leaps to mind. Eyebrow fish. Yeah, I think fish, Serafini yeah. said that some people got like tattoos of those eyebrow fish. That would not surprise me. Yeah. No, no, it's very ta- a very <clears throat> tattooable book, really. I mean, yeah. Yeah. think about it. There's a lot in here that's just. I, I think if I had to go with anything, my favorite thing would be the horse. That's like half weird, globby thing with a pair of wheels on the end. That is probably one oh, of my yeah. favorites. Yeah, that's right. It looks yeah. like a potato or yam or something on his uh, back half. <laughs> I really like some of those diagrams, which are supposed to be of like, I guess, cultures or civilization. They're just so elaborate. And it's just like a lot of weird things going on, like, you know, somersaulting crocodiles and people dancing on the stage and oh, all that there, other kind of stuff. There is also that one where it's like the two politicians meeting at the ends of their respective railroads on like elaborate uh, thrones of some kind. Oh yes. With their oh, yes, yes. So it's like a little slice of life into like the political dealings of this country, which involves a lot of weird stuff. And probably those lady boy things, because you know there was one of those lady boys that was walking down a red carpet, and there's all these, you know, it seems like that being is like really important to the civilization, whatever whatever the heck is going on, it involves it. Leggy boys for peace. i i really like just because of the naturalist in me i really like these kind of lizardy fishy naked mole rat things uh constructing their underground and underwater burrows they're like weaving oh yeah they're almost like weaver birds they're weaving their underground bar uh, underwater burrow one of them has a, a sewing needle for an arm and it's got thread coming out of its mouth yeah I really like the fish. Like there's just so much weird things going on with the fish. There's, and also it lends itself to like multiple interpretation as well, because I know that one of the fish, um, I don't know if you recall, it's the picture has the head or the front end of a fish and it's like hooked on a fishing line. And then you got this other fish kind of fo- uh, right behind that. And I always thought there's two ways of interpreting it, either, this is a weird kind of fish where if you try to go fishing for them and if it gets hooked in the mouth, it would detach its front half and get away. Oh, yeah. Or the alternative to, you know, interpreting that, and it is completely in line with how bizarre this world appears to work, is that in order to catch these fish, you have to like make a fake version of the front half of the fish and the fish would see it and naturally swim like you know fit into it like a glove i don't know there's like two ways to interpret that particular picture uh, it's just so weird and like you could get as many interpretation out of some of these pictures as you do with like how many people have read this book you know they probably have their own explanation as to like what the heck is going on in that relatively simple picture yeah Yes, I like how it uh, makes you build your own story in your head, trying to decide yeah. what's going on. Yeah, yeah. The only, the really, the only other surrealist artist that I follow, I don't know if you guys have heard of him, is named Evan Dom. He does oh, oh, Rice yeah. Boy Rice and Boy. Batu, yes. and yeah. Yes. Yeah. I um, remember reading through Rice Boy. Uh, that was great. Rice Rice Boy's comic incredible, guys. and his current comic Batu is is mm-hmm. excellent as well. But. Yes. Um, not quite as surreal, but uh, so had I not been familiar with his work, I don't know if I would have liked this book, but because I've kind of been, I don't know, I have uh, more familiarity now with, with surrealism, uh, this, this really, I really like this. 
And I really liked it. Even, you know, you try to interpret it, but because your brain just naturally tries to interpret these things, but I don't think you're really supposed to. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can. No, no. I think you just have to, like when I look through this, the more I look through it, I think, geez, this guy, what is in this guy's head? It's so incredible that he can <laughs> think up yes. this stuff and, and put it down on paper, my God. And uh, yeah, yeah I, I just I really it. see it as a very incredibly creative project. It feels oh, yeah. very dreamlike. It feels like it all makes dream logic. How, for example, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but like when you're in the dream and you would do certain things that in real life you go, that makes no sense whatsoever. Why oh, yeah. is there a oh, giant yeah, yeah, rubber yeah. duck? And why am I trying to like feed it potato by throwing it uh, fish or something like that? Like things that makes no sense in real life in a dream is go yeah naturally that's how it goes and that's what the content of this book feels like it's, it feels like it, it feels like it comes out of someone's stream of consciousness while they're lucid dreaming i agree um, i don't know if that's how he <laughs> does his art but like it, it feel it gives you the same feeling as that yeah definitely a dream like and one of those surreal dreams that you're brain in the really early hours of the night like mm -hmm. hour 25 you know slips into and and your brain confabulates all these details Indeed. well i guess like you know i'm sure you have like other thoughts about this book as well this this book is such you know there's a lot of material so to speak to to talk about you know with all these different sections and bizarre imageries and I'm just looking at one here, which is, I think, supposed to be in the car section, but it's the page with the car that has, like, I guess, fly paper on it. It looks like it's made out of, like, cream, and it's melting. Oh, I've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then on the same page is some kind of, like, conveyor belt thing, and there's, like, all kinds of, you know, intricate imagery on it that seems to be sticking onto whatever surface that this thing is driving on or moving <laughs> across um yeah there's just so so many it's like so much of this just total strangeness i can see certain type of people getting frustrated by this particular work because there's sure. no explanation like yeah. and the author the the creator has never like provided really any explanation for what any of the things in there for are right and, given how audience these days, they, you know, they, they watch the simplest, most formulaic piece of media. And then they, they immediately go to YouTube video, go ending of whatever explained. It was like, I never realized you need to explain the ending of that thing. It seems the most straightforward thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, really. And, and, you know, I would necessarily call it straightforward per se, but one of the things I'm looking through here and just sort of noticing now is just the fact that the text itself is not a font. And when I say there's pages and pages and pages of this stuff, I mean, <clears throat> dense pages of dense text. Some pages have only text on them yep. and it's all hand done. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like an illuminated manuscript. Yeah. Yeah, this must um, have taken a, I mean, it took him two years. I'm surprised it only took him two years. Well, yeah, he really. basically just locked himself away like a hermit. And oh, really? Just did nothing but, yeah, in the interview, he said, I just did nothing but but just draw and draw oh, and wow. draw and draw and write and write and write. So, yeah, it, that, that's how he got it done because he one day he was like, okay, I'm going to make this thing now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, he kept, he would have kept going too, except his publisher wanted to get oh, some yeah. sort of something on <laughs> hey, on the, oh. on, into ink. <laughs> The, the publishers, because they were worried, worried that, like, given it's an art book, the color prints is going to be really, really expensive. You know, yep. oh, like yeah. I'm just imagining the meme of like the publisher going, like, you can't draw this much. This is going to cost us so much. <laughs> and then, you know, Serafini is just there, like, stream of consciousness go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cool. Oh. Yeah, the publisher must have been like, oh my God, what, what have I gotten into? into? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I think that's why they priced the book kind of high because it's definitely yeah. an art book for sure. And it's worth every penny. I mean, if you can 
get a hold of an actual physical copy definitely yeah so. like yeah. when like if you could uh zach i would highly recommend getting the 40th edition a uh, 40th anniversary edition because like, oh, i'm gonna I, keep I'm not, my eye out yeah yeah i'm not gonna get another one of these because it's so expensive and like yeah. I, you know the extra pages would be nice but like i don't want two massive tunes of like codex serafinianus in in my house um, <laughs> as as fantastic as that might be uh just in terms of cost and also space wise sure yeah it'd be cool to have a, a real copy of this book i'm gonna keep my eye out mm -hmm. yeah Maybe even find a used copy because a used copy might be cheaper. Oh, that's if, true. If it's a previous edition. Maybe it'll turn uh, up a tidal wave one of these times. No, oh, that would be amazing. It would. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, have a look on places like Book Depository. They usually have like some kind of a discount on big books like that. So oh, okay. good show notes. It's it and in fact, I gotta say, I, I got our copy for like forty dollars oh, back really? in twenty thirteen. Yeah wow because amazon was having an amazing sale on this particular title and i got an amazon gift card so i i basically only paid like 40 dollars for the the book plus shipping i think to nice. homer oh we, wow when we lived in homer so yeah yeah but uh, uh yeah keep an eye out for earlier editions and keep in mind that uh uh the first edition was in, published in two volumes so one's oh, so no good without the other. Be so. seeing one one volume, yeah. Yeah, just just be aware that that might be a concern. Okay, it's good to know. Yeah, I remember. I still kick myself, oh, Scott. I think you were there. We were both title wave, and and they had a copy of Wayne Douglas Barlow's Inferno. Yes. And I oh, didn't yes. buy it for some reason. Same. It was only like thirty bucks, and I thought, oh, this is this will come down. <laughs> nope. Did you guys nope. manage to get yourself a copy of uh, Cycle Pump? Which was uh, Wayne no, Barlow's. Okay. We just couldn't afford it. Yeah. Even even with the the pre the uh, pre order cost, we just couldn't yeah. afford it. Oh, that's oh, that's shame. the one that just came out, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. it included yeah, I, I his didn't either. old artwork yeah. and some new artwork, yeah. like the ones that he's been posting onto Instagram. So. I remember seeing that and thinking, oh, you know, the expedition was already expensive. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah. I love that book, but yeah, yeah. no. Yeah, with the whole episode. You know, that's right. Mm -hmm. What else can you say about the Codex Serafinianus other than it's weird and it's you know very colorful and and mm -hmm. weirdly inspiring. I mean, I can yes. see why Scott. I can see why you've been very inspired by it, and and yeah, it's it's so weird, but I love it. Yeah. Everything's different. Every single thing is totally different. A whole new way of thinking. Uh, and like I said, nothing, nothing in it is normal. Like no. Everything is just completely off the wall. Bonkers, as you say. Yeah. I mean, really. Totally bonkers. <laughs> so yeah, uh, listeners at home, if you could like, even, even if you don't get a copy, go to your library, try to find a copy, have a, like, check out this book. It's really, if you appreciate art, especially surrealist art, um, you would, get an absolute kick out of Codex Seraphini yeah, absolutely. And, and get taken the opportunity now that they have a 40th anniversary edition with the new artwork that I've never seen before uh, either. Um, go check that out. Uh, it's, it's, it's good for you. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It's good I for agree. the brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's what good for book. the soul. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for listening uh, and listening to us talk about this uh, really surreal art book. Uh, once again, another recommendation for you guys to go out and check out Codex Serafiniatus. And we'll catch you next time in the next episode of the Gallimorphic Science Podcast. Yep, yep. <laughs>